everyone, Alicia McGill here with Math Labs. Today we're looking at Content Standard 6.ns.1, which is sixth grade number sense um, common core standard. And this corresponds with Lab 3.4 of the Math Labs series. Um, basically, we're working still with division of fractions. Our mathematical practices are 1, 4, and 8, and we're really going to focus on 4, which is drawing a visual model. Um, we've been using fraction bars, but we will also look at number lines. That's in lab 3.8, so that's coming. That's one other visual. And, um, of course, then we're going to work with our application story problems and such. But let's look at today's problem. So, open up your lab books to lab 3.4 and read the objective in your head as I read it aloud. I can use a visual model to find quotients of fractions, namely a fraction divided by a fraction. Okay, and everyone by now, I mean, we're in the fifth um, lab out of section three, should know what a quotient is. If you forgot, it's the answer when you divide, okay? So that's our quotient. All right, um, let's look at that problem. Let's get right into it. So we have four fifths, all right, divided by two fifths. Now, in all of the labs, we've been talking about three components in every one of the boxes on the lab. One is, what is the meaning of this? So, in a complete sentence, what is the meaning? Secondly, is this quotient going to be greater than or less than one? And in that one, it just says to circle, so greater than one or less than one. And, of course, what's the visual model to show the quotient? All right, so let's go through that. Number one. What is the meaning? This means how many groups of two-fifths are in four-fifths, okay? All right, is this quotient going to be greater than or less than one? Well, if I had two-fifths going to two-fifths, that would be exactly one, right? Um, because anything divided by itself is one, right? Like five divided by five, one. But we don't have two-fifths divided by two-fifths, which is one. We have more than two-fifths. We have four fifths, so that means this is going to go into this. So your divisor is going to go into your dividend more than one. So our quotient is going to be greater than one, all right? And our visual model is going to prove that. Remember, we've been working with proving, like prove that Bailey's method is correct by showing a visual model or disprove by writing a counterexample. Those are important skills. So you're going to hear a lot of that in all the labs. All right, let's start with our visual model. You know what? We have a fraction. We used to just have like a whole number in all the other labs, right? Like a whole number of four and we draw four bars or two. But we only have one to draw and in fact, less than one, four-fifths to draw. So I'm going to draw four lines, one, two, three, four, to look at our fifths, okay? And I'm going to label them after I shade them because if we're talking about four-fifths, we don't have the whole bar, so we get to shade. Yay! I love coloring. Um, so if you have a highlighter, this is where it would be really useful. If you have a whiteboard, you're great. But in class, I always recommend that you have like a yellow and a pink or just two different colors because it will help really um, create a good visual. Uh, you can also use your pencil to shade that in. But I always think that color um, just makes everything pop. I'm all about the pop. All right, so these are all fifths. So, of course, we have our four fifths, which is what we're starting with here. All right, so just like we did in the other labs, we're going to circle groups of two fifths to see how many groups of two fifths go into four fifths. All right, so I can circle a group of two fifths here and a group of two fifths here. So, my quotient is two because I have two-fifths that go into four-fifths one time, two times, right? Two groups. And this is going to be an interesting lab because there actually is a cool discovery. Mm -hmm. And um, so you're going to analyze your table once you're done writing the, the problems and the solutions, right? So your quotients in the table will be very helpful. And hopefully you and your partner can discuss and talk about what uh, pattern you see and if it will always work and test it out. All right, so let's just check it really quick here. Let's just do a multiplication like we've been. Remember, the, the quotient times the divisor should give us the dividend. So we're going to multiply 2, which we know is the same as 2 over 1, multiplied by 2 fifths, 
Okay, you learned in the lab 3.0, the shortcut, after you did a series of models, that this you multiply straight across the numerators, 2 times 2 is 4, and 1 times 5 straight across here is 5. And so you do get that dividend, right? So we end up with 4 fifths, and that's what we have here. And we've been doing that all along, right? Like when we have any problem, I like to change it up. So 56 divided by 7 equals 8. Remember, we can always check that by using multiplication 8 times 7. And it worked here, 2 times 2 fifths. And it even shows up in the visual. 2 fifths, 2 times, gives you 4 fifths. So it's a great conceptual understanding for you um, looking at it from the model point of view and then moving from the model to the algorithm, which is where we're going. And uh, that's pretty cool. All good stuff. On your whiteboard, you're gonna do an example with me now. Okay, and then you're gonna do one on your own. You know what, actually, I found that this was pretty simple. Um, so we're just gonna do one. You're gonna do it alone, okay? So this is the problem I want you to do on your whiteboard. It is five eighths divided by three eighths. Okay, so go ahead and take a few moments to do that on your uh, handy dandy whiteboard, okay? And then I'll call the color of your whiteboard and you can show me your quotients. I knew that was gonna fall. We're just gonna let it drop. Um, show me your quotients in a few moments. So I'll give you some time. All right, that's all time you get. So hopefully you pause the video to do that. Um, so we're back here, we have five eighths. So let's start by first drawing our five eighths. Eighths are cool because we can go in half, right? Two and then half of that makes our fourths. And if we divide each of those parts in half again, we end up with nice eighths, right? Which are better than the fractional parts that I've been making today. We're gonna highlight five out of those eight, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five. So we have five eighths highlighted because that's what the problem is. Remember, we always start here and we're seeing how many groups of three eighths go into five eighths. So we have to have five eighths highlighted here or at least displayed in a visual manner. And now we're gonna do what we did in, in the past. We're gonna circle groups of three eighths. And if you wanna um, label these, you definitely can. Sometimes it just helps to um, solidify that concept that these are eighths and we shaded five eighths and now we're seeing how many groups of three eighths, all right? Now this is an interesting one, I'll show you why. When we circle a group of, bam, three eighths, we only get one group. So our answer is gonna have a remainder here. And then we see that there are two parts of the one, two, three, and we did this before, so this should be simple. All right, because in lab 3.3, um, we looked at a specific example where we had a remainder, all right, and how to interpret that remainder. So we don't have two eights left over, okay? That was the common error. That was the misconception. We have two out of the three parts to make a group. So we have a part of a group that is remaining, and that's what we're counting, how many groups. So one whole group and then two-thirds of a group, because this is two out of one, two, three, okay? So that's two-thirds of a group, all right? Now, just to make sure that we interpreted the remainder correctly and we have the correct quotient, we're gonna use, remember that operation? It's the inverse of division, it's, you guessed it, multiplication. And remember, sometimes I have my kids do that, just to remember, you can multiply the mm, quotient times the divisor to get the dividend. So let's start with one and two thirds. We know that that's five thirds. How do we know that? Three times one is three plus two. Um, of course, you can think about it as one is three thirds, and then you also have two thirds, and three thirds and two thirds makes five thirds. That's one way to also think about um, turning this into an improper, and it's more conceptual that way. But if you know the trick and you discovered it and you understand the concept, no problem, three times one is three plus two is five. You can move to that. All right, times three eighths, and we're gonna go straight across, but I can cross cancel here. But you know what, I'm not. Let's just pretend, you know, I don't know how to cross cancel. I do, but I'm gonna pretend I don't, and I don't cancel out those threes and make those um, threes into ones, and I go straight across. Five times three is 15, and three times eight is 24. But what we have to do now is reduce it. Because we didn't cross cancel, we have to simplify this. I don't like to use the word reduce because we're not making it smaller. 
we're just writing a different denominator, right? And so we're looking at it with less parts, but it's equivalent. So to do that, we could think of a number that goes into 15 and 24, and or we can think of the GCF to be more efficient. But I only can multiply 3 times 5 and 1 times 15, and I know that 3 is what goes into the numerator and denominator. So 15 divided by 3 is 5, 24 divided by 3 is 8. And you do, in fact, get 5 a's here, which is what we were, we were hoping for. And sometimes you get lost in the problem when you're checking, and then you forget what you're actually doing. That does happen. But just remember, we were checking, does our quotient multiplied by our divisor give us the dividend? And it does. It gives us what we started with. So that's kind of like the yay, it checks, right, in the happy dance. Um, so, what you're going to do now is you're going to you're going to work together with your partner, and you're going to work on a I, I believe there's like six problems in which you are <clears throat> dividing a fraction divided by a fraction, and then you're going to put your answers and the problems in a table. And what I I want you to do is I want you to write your answer as an improper fraction, just as a fraction. Okay, here we got one and two thirds. But in the lab, it says write it as a fraction. So that's 5 thirds, right? 3 times 1 is 3 plus 2 is 5 thirds. The reason why I want you to write it as 5 thirds, you'll see why. It, it's going to follow a cool pattern, and it will help to um, just enable you to see what the pattern is so that you can identify the shortcut. All right? And it'll just be like so like bam, it would like pop off the page that you, you just can't even deny the fact that there's a cool pattern there and that you found it. All right, so you're going to want to change your quotients back to improper, and I feel like that's kind of like the opposite of what math teachers want you to do, right? It's like, always simplify. But for the purpose of the lab and looking for the pattern, I want you to keep it as a fraction, and that table will um, will tell you to do that, and the first one is done for you as a guide, um, guiding problem. All right, so let's have some fun with this lab.